Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn and in today's video we are going to be making an interactive card using the Magic Iris and Magic Iris camera but with a tropical theme. So I wanted to show you quick this is what we are going to make. This is the interactive portion so it's opening up the camera to view this beautiful tropical scenery. I'm going to give you a quick look at the products we'll be using. We have Long Distance, which is where my sentiment is coming from, All the Clouds, and Smooth Sailing. For the dies, I'll be using the Magic Iris and the Magic Iris Camera and the Camera Add-on. And then I also have the Stitched Hillside Border and Tropical Backdrop. I'm starting off by creating my magic iris. So we're going to do the interactive portion first. I took that circle die and I cut it three times from mermaid cardstock. I also took this little tab and cut that three times. And then I also have the hot dog shape. And this one I'm actually using the tropical shimmer cardstock. So it's that mermaid color, but it's going to have shimmer on it. Now I'm going to take one of my circles that I die cut out. And I'm going to take this image or this shape that looks like a flux capacitor. This is out of the regular Magic Iris die. And I'll run that through my die cut machine. So it's going to create those little slots for us. Then I went ahead and I die cut the extended tab from Peacock cardstock and our little decorative arrow out of Fog cardstock. To start with, I'm going to take the hot dog shape that I die cut out three times from the shimmer cardstock. I'm going to take the tab and slide that into those slots that we die cut out earlier from one of our circles. Then I'm going to line the inner curve of that hot dog shape with the inside circle. And I'll do that three times. There's three slots. Just kind of gently holding those in place. Now I need to place some glue dots on where those little X's are on our hot dog shapes. So I have some glue dots here that are individ on in some individual squares. And I just peeled back the release paper. I can lay those glue dots down right over the X. Now you want the glue dots that are 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I'll do that to each one of those. So three glue dots just going right over where that X is on those hot dog shapes. Once I have all three of those in place, I'm going to take my second circle and just lay that right down on top, making sure that everything is lined up evenly, and then I can flip that over. I'm going to take my tape runner and add some tape right where that perforated slot is and just drag that down to a straight line. I'll take these three tabs that we die cut earlier and place one on each of those. So we'll have these three tabs sticking out. And that tape runner really holds these down in place really good. Then I'll flip that back over and I'm going to attach my tab, which is going to be the uh, pull tab that they use to open and close our interactive portion. So I just added a little bit of that tape runner and I'm going to line that curve up with the inside circle. And you just need to go next to one of the tabs. It doesn't matter which one of those you do. Line that up and you're going to create kind of a little V there right between your pull tab and the smaller tab. So once you have that lined in place, you can just press that down. And then we're going to bring in our third circle and we're going to just lay that on top. We're going to want to place some adhesive on all three of those smaller tabs. And then we'll bring that uh, third circle in and that's how we're going to attach it. So you're, you're not putting any adhesive on this, otherwise your interactive part won't move. So just taking those small three tabs, you're going to gently fold those in and you don't want to go all the way to the inside. You're just kind of gently uh, folding those over and it's going to be inside the line. You'll be able to see kind of closer up that they go right outside kind of that uh, perforated or stitched edge. Then I'll take the decorative piece that I cut out of fog cardstock. I'm going to add some tape to the back of that. And I'll glue that directly onto my tab, the interactive portion that'll help open our interactive window. So that just leaves kind of a darker blue arrow showing through. 
and then we'll give this a test run and just make sure everything is working correctly. Then I'll move on to working on the camera. So I'm taking the Magic Iris camera and I'm actually going to be die cutting it twice. I wanted to add two tones to it. You could do this out of pattern paper or any other color of cardstock, but I'm going to die cut this from Storm Cloud and Fog cardstock. So I'll run those both through my die cutting machine. So I'll have essentially two cameras, but one of them I'm going to trim down. Then I have my smaller pieces, which is the button, the flash, and then the topper for my button. I die cut those out of Storm Cloud, black licorice cardstock, and then the yellow for the flash is from Shimmer cardstock. And I also have the lens here. Now I just wanted the border around the lens, but it does cut out that really cute shine mark too, if you didn't want to do this as an interactive card. So we are going to decorate our camera. You can see here there's a stitched line and kind of a little embossed line there. I'm going to cut that strip out on the embossed line and I'll just do that with my Tim Holtz paper trimmer. So I'm going to uh, put that under my safeguard there and line up that scored line and just trim that out. Now this, like I said, can be out of any color pattern, paper or cardstock, however you want to do it. I kept it pretty calm for colors because I knew my background was going to be so busy and so vibrant. Here I'll show you what that strip looks like on top of the camera. So I really liked that two-tone look that it's giving. Before I attach anything down, I want to do my stamping on here first uh, for my sentiment because I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of space otherwise. So I lined that piece up into my Misty Stamping Tool and I'm going to stamp from this stamp set called Long Distance. Now you don't need to have a stamping tool for this, you could just use an acrylic block. So once I take off the sentiments that I'm going to use and line them up straight, then I'll pick them up with the door of my Misty and I'm going to prep my cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. This will just help eliminate any static or fingerprints that I may have left and also help so my embossing powder only sticks to my clear embossing ink that I'm using to stamp down the images. So once I have that stamped down, I'll sprinkle on the Lawn Fawn white embossing powder and then I'll heat set that with my heat tool. So the heat tool is just melting that embossing powder and really makes it stand out against that uh, dark background. Then what I like to do is once that's cooled off, I'll take a Swiffer cloth and just kind of dust off any of that excess powder. Now I can come in and finish decorating and putting together my camera. So I just added that strip down to the front with a tape runner. I'm going to add this little lens rim with some liquid glue and my tweezers. I had some cardstock kind of feathering at the top from die cutting, so I just went around that with my tweezers. I'm adding that top button portion with the liquid glue. And there's a little circle there right by where my button's gonna go. So I just took some chili pepper cardstock and trimmed out a little square and added that with a tape runner. Then I could finish off by adding my button and my little flash that I'm popping up with some foam squares. So the decorating of our camera is done, and then we can work on getting our magic iris attached. So I'm taking my tape runner, I'm gonna add that to the top of my magic iris that I created. So I'm going just all the way around. I like to add tape runner everywhere uh, because then I just make sure that this is really holding together good. Then you want to make sure that it is closed so you know where your lever is because you want that lever, that tab, to be at the top and line up your centers. And then you can push down and just make sure everything is working and your tab is in the correct position. Now I'll move on to working on some images for my scene. So I'm using the stamp set All the Clouds, which literally has all the clouds. It has so many different sizes. It's one of my new favorite stamp sets. And it has these little tiny clouds that are perfect for the magic iris. I'm also using the stamp set Smooth Sailing. And I used the sailboat out of that. And I stamped all of that in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is Copic friendly. So for my clouds, I just colored around the poofiness of it with a B00 just to give it a little bit of color. On the sail... I am using cool grays, so I have C3, C2, C1, and C0, just coloring out from that pole going outwards, so it gives just a little bit of dimension to it. And for the bottom of my boat, 
I'm starting with the darkest color on the outside, flicking in towards the center. And I used E79, 77, 74, and 57. And then just R37 for a quick color to the flag. Then I'm lining up the coordinating dies, holding them in place with some post-it tape, and I'll run this through my die cutting machine. For the background, I am going to be using the tropical background, and I'm using those palm tree tops and the trunks. I'll die cut the trunks from paper bag cardstock twice, and I'll cut the tops of the palm trees from cilantro cardstock twice, and then the sand bottom, I use that stitched hillside border and die cut it from gold rush cardstock. Moving on to our background, I'm lining up my camera on a piece of white cardstock. I'm also going to be using the grid lines of my mat underneath. So I'm eyeballing about where the camera is going to be, where that center point is, and using the lines there, kind of lining up about where I'm going to mask off my scene. So you can see on each side of my cardstock, I have a line there that I'm making sure my post-it tape is straight across on there. And I'm masking off my sky and my sea. So for the sky, I'm going to be using Distress Inks. I have Candied Apple, Spiced Marmalade, and Mustard Seed. I'm starting off with the lightest color first, which is the Mustard Seed, starting at the bottom there, which is right by the post-it tape. Notice I am using uh, foam blending pads for this. So I do vary throughout the video of my ink blending tools, just depending on what I'm doing. If I am adding a lot of color where I really don't care about how soft edges are, I use foam ink blend blending pads, which are very affordable. You can have lots of them on hand for your colors. So I go back and forth between the two. Like I said, I know a lot of this is going to get covered up. So I'm, I'm not really concerned with any imprints that the foam pad is making and then I bring in my camera just to eyeball that make sure that uh, the colors are all showing in there. Then I'll remove my post-it tape from the bottom and place that over my ink blended sky that I just did so now we can work on our water. Now I'm starting off with tumble glass this is one of the lightest colors of the distress ink and I'm using a blending brush for this. Now the reason I switched is because I really wanted a nice soft color and I have a hard time achieving that with a foam blending pad. Now you can really use whatever you have on hand, but this is why I switch between um, my different blending tools. They all serve a unique purpose to me. So just adding a little bit on there in the middle where my sailboat's gonna go. And then I'll bring in the Salty Ocean, and this is where I switched back to my foam pad because I'm adding a lot of color to it. I'm just getting softer in my blending as I get towards that center. I really like kind of having that shiny spot or that really nice light spot in the middle. So just finishing off with that ink blending, and you can see I just added a little bit more, kind of brought that Salty Ocean in salty ocean in just a little bit. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'll remove that post-it tape. So here's our background that we just created. And now I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra color to my images. These are the palm trees. I'm adding some color. This is mowed lawn distress ink, just kind of going around the edges of the tops of my palm trees. And then I'm using walnut stain for my tree trunks. This I'm using a finger dauber for just because I didn't want to really go in a lot. I just wanted to add a little bit of that darker color just to one side of the tree trunks. And the finger daubers work really well for that. So coming in to the final stretch, which is the assembly of our card, I'm going to go ahead and just add my sandy beach there down at the bottom that I die cut with the Gold Rush cardstock. And then lining up my camera, this is going to help me figure out where my sailboat's going to go and the little clouds. So once I have that kind of lined up in the center there, I'll take the little clouds and I switch between the tape runner and liquid glue, just depending on honestly what's closest, what's more convenient. And just attaching those. So I have one cloud kind of coming into the scene. It looks a little more realistic if I have one half in and half out. And then I'm just adding... Uh, the tops of the palm trees to the trunks with some liquid glue and once that's kind of dried I'm lining up about where they're going to go on the side of the card. Now you could definitely add these to the front and kind of overhang on the camera but I really wanted to showcase the camera 
and I'm keeping it symmetrical. So it's the same on both sides. I have two big ones on each side and then a small one on each side. So it's the same and kind of balances the card out a little bit. I know a lot of it gets hidden, but sometimes it's just that extra detail that really helps make a card come together. And this is also why uh, I explained it wasn't, our ink blending wasn't as important because a lot of it's getting covered up by our camera. And I really just loved this idea of taking a picture and you think about all the different things you take a picture of. And this is what popped into my mind is taking a picture of this beautiful scene. So I wanted to add just a little bit of dimension to this and you could just add foam squares to the side of the camera, but I wanted a little more stability. So I added foam squares right on top of where those tabs were that we glued down earlier. So I have one square on each of those tabs that makes sure that our interactive portion still works. It's not in the way. And then I'm taking a foam square and adding it just to that one side to see, notice when I move, I wanna make sure nothing is in the way there. Now, because our magic iris already kind of adds dimension to this, I need to add uh, two layers of foam squares on that furthest side. So the part that's on the camera, I need two layers of foam squares. So two layers there, I have one set of foam squares on my actual magic iris, and that should balance it out across my card and make it nice and even. Then I'll just remove the release paper on all of those foam squares, center in my sailboat, and just push down, and we are all set. Now, one thing I did notice is I needed to add just a little strip of foam tape to the button because it uh, kind of was a little flimsy there, so I just snuck that in really quick. And here's a look at our completed card. We have the magic iris and the magic iris camera to reveal this gorgeous sunset scene. So I really love how this came out. Totally in love with the camera because I think there's just so many possibilities to it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.